Hi. Um, I had a picture recently on Instagram and some of you asked for a video to see how to take names like these and turn it into something like this. So, um, this is my first, uh, how to video. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so first you have them write their name. These are my kids' names. Um, one thing to make sure of best done if it's on white paper with no lines in the background, um, because otherwise the computers pick that up as something you want, um, embroidered. So first we take the iPod that comes with the machine and we take a picture straight on. So like that. Now we're going to go to the My Design Snap app from Brother. We are going to select image for pattern editing. And we are going to click um, on the picture we took and we're gonna hit send to machine. You should get this message that says it's been sent and hit okay. And now you can go to your sewing machine. Now I'm working with a brother Stellaire. I'm gonna wake up my machine. You go into my design center. So one thing that I like to make sure of um, is I want to make sure my design is going to be inside of the hoop I want. So I'm going to use a 5 by 7 hoop today. Um, that's what I hooped my fabric and stabilizer with. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you go up to this little, um, like, post-it note looking thing with a page turned down and when you're on the embroidery one you can check the frame size and grid and I have mine set to five by seven um, but if you want it bigger or smaller you can change it with the arrows and then I just hit okay and that way I know when I'm working that it is going to fit in the hoop I want. So now your next step will be to bring in your actual photo. You hit this leaf with an arrow and you can either bring it in through the app like I just did or if it's an image from a computer you could also use one of the USB ports on the side of your machine. I sent it from my app, my app so I'm going to hit the Wi-Fi signal and it's going to bring up my images. I'm going to click on this first one. So that should be the one we just sent over. And there it is. So I'm gonna hit set. And there is um, my piece of paper. This is um, line embroidery. So the next thing you'll do is hit this line with the outline of a leaf. So I will click on that. Now they it comes with a stylus. You're, you can use your hands, but I find that the stylus helps give you just a little bit more control. So you can bring that in like that. This will help eliminate a lot of that background. And I'm gonna hit okay. And this shows you the image. As you can see, I have a little bit of a line right here. That's because it's the edge of the paper. Um, that's because my son wrote so close to the edge here that it's really hard to crop it. So I will get to show you um, another feature also. We'll hit set. And here is the name. As you can see, um, the names are bigger than my my five by seven here. 
we want to resize them. To do that, you click this uh, selection tool with the dotted squares. And I can draw a box around what I want. I can now rotate, size, or duplicate this item. I just want to size it. These are the standard ones that come on every brother I've ever sewn on. But you can, you know, make all four sides smaller or four sides bigger. Just shrink the length or just shrink the width or extend the width or the length. So we're going to hit this button to shrink all four sides just so that I can get the name inside the guide right there. I am going to also, while I have it selected, go ahead and move it up so it's inside my guide right here. I'm going to hit OK and I am going to go and reselect the, that tool, select my son's name, and I'm going to hit size, and we're going to shrink it also. I'm going to bring it a little closer, and I'm going to go just a tiny bit bigger so it's closer to the same size as my daughter's. Now, as you see, one thing that happened when I selected it here is I was able to not select so much of this up there. Let's see. Hit OK. I could now get rid of that background so that I'm not confused on what I'm actually sewing versus what was the background image. This little matchbox looking thing is your eraser. You have two different types and three sizes in each. So you can do a square or a circle. Um, I use both of them depending on what I'm doing, but I normally use the circle. Um, so I'm going to hit close and I'm going to go ahead and erase this line right here. It looks like I had a dot there from just some stuff on the paper. Your line is not so far um, away from your subject that you're embordering. One thing you can do is zoom in right here. And then there's a red box over here to help you get to the exact part you want. So like if I wanted to do a little bit of edit on these E's, then I could do it like that. And then that way, um, you know, it's still his name, but, you know, it doesn't have that little bit of extra. It depends, I guess, on exactly what you're doing. Um, for this, I just also wanted to show you that because if you're not doing a name, you might need to erase. So we're going to go ahead and zoom back out. I'm going to use this as selection tool again and highlight my daughter's name. I am going to go to the paint bucket, or I'm sorry, I'm going to go to this post-it with the lines with a line underneath it. In here, this has several things. When we can select a color, um, like I'm going to go ahead and select pink, but it also has different functions. This one right here with the pencil and a half circle is for you to draw lines on your screen. This one is an autocomplete. So that means if I would draw a circle and I'd get close to the top, it would go ahead and complete that circle for me. This is straight lines. And then this tool I've not mastered yet, but it's basically like you draw lines 
and it auto connects your points for you. Um, I've not figured out yet how to really use it. But this is for your stitching. This is your satin stitch, a double line stitch, a triple stitch, what I call the snowflake chain um, or snowflake stitch and then your chain stitch. This is if you didn't want to sew part of the image. I like the satin stitch for this so I'm going to leave it on that and I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to with the paint brush select the paint bucket selected I'm going to hit every letter of my daughter's name. As you know, it doesn't matter really on screen what color it is. It matters what thread you've picked to sew. I really am doing this so that um, it puts a natural break in there so I can change the colors of thread and it gives it a little bit more distinction on the screen. So now we're going to hit next and it's going to show me a preview. You can hit the selection button and it will take you through all of the letters if you want to see. And I have one selected. If you hit the chain, it will select it all. And here is the width. I've been leaving that alone because I really like the sizing that it's doing at least alone um, because I really like the eight hundredths of an inch it's doing. Um, so I've not changed that. The, and that's the one with the blue arrow. The one next to it is about density. I have, it's normally set to 100. I've been changing it to 90 because I don't feel like it needs the 100%. And then you hit set. And then you can hit preview. And it'll tell you it's not going to be saved and to continue on. And now you see both of their names and you can see the size how many stitches your time and my two threads and we are going to hit set it's going to tell you that it's actually converting it now into an embroidery pattern and that you're exiting this design area you hit okay and now you see their names on the screen so you can hit embroidery and then you're going to take your fabric that you've hooped and stabilizer and put it in the machine. And ready? It's going to stitch out.
Don't you just love that sound? It's done. so you can see it see it turned out really great so it's done it looks great and what a great way to preserve your kids or grandkids' names you could put this on like an apron or um, make a pillow out of this or maybe put it on clothes or even a blanket but you could also get like your grandparents and have them write their names so that you can preserve that too. Um, you, some other good tips would also be to put like the date, um, like the year or maybe their age on here. So you know exactly from when it's from. So thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what, if you liked this and if you want some more videos. Um, leave us a comment below and thank you for watching some adventures from our sewing room in Kansas. Bye!